What is Loeb AI? Yeah, Loeb AI is um, it's a small, it's, it's a product built by a small company that was acquired by Microsoft and um, they're just doing their thing. And it's a really beautiful thing to see. They have a very beautiful app to create vision models. So if you have any need in your website, or your uh, mobile app for um, image inference. You know, if you need to point your camera at something and have um, and have some kind of model telling you what that thing is, then this is the product for you. It's free. It's done locally. You can uh, you can train everything up locally and then save your models locally, and it it really works well. And right now, I think what, what they're doing is they're perfecting this experience of creating this nice uh, image inference technique. And then later on, they're going to, you know, expand what the product offers. The next thing I'm going to guess would be something like um, allowing bounding boxes with multiple object inference. That might be the next thing that they'll that they'll focus on. I'm guessing, um, but there's a lot of really great things that they can do. So if you visit Loeb AI, and why don't I just um, I'll just minimize this and just share. If you want to share my screen, we can just walk through their their website. So I'm gonna guess, um, give me a verbal signal if you're sharing, seeing my screen. There you go. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, they have on their website some very interesting use cases. It's not just, you know, wandering around and pointing your phone at things and figuring out what they are. It's actually training custom models. So you can make a very specific use case like, um, in my garden right down there, I have about five different very specific to New England type of plants. You know, maybe I wanna just point my camera and figure out what Exact Cosma, Xenia, uh, well, I think there's some tomato and some catnip down there, you know, exactly what's in that garden. Um, and you could, and if, if you're a farmer, you know, you might have this extremely use case that you need to figure out exactly what, what disease is impacting your soybeans or something like that. You could go ahead and train up using your own images, a model, and then you would be able to give labels to your, to your images that you collect. And then this product will help um, train up a model that you can use within a web app. So here's another example. Um, if you want to, you know, look for emotions, um, I'm trying to think of a use case that would be interesting. Um, I, I've I've heard like for for emotion I've I've heard different use cases for you know like somebody who who maybe struggles picking up um, you know facial cues or sometimes for somebody who's vision impaired and is you know trying to get a little bit more sense of the room so like a, a described audio. There you um, go. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a comedian could use it, you know, to figure out when, when that laugh track needs to happen because people's deadpanning. You know? <laughs> For me, it would be never, which is why I'm not a comedian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then this is the kind of mask or no mask um, visualization. So that's, that's, a, that's an easy, easy thing to understand. And this is looking at plants. So um, obviously they're, they've, they've trained a very specific model. Here's, you know, one, two, three. Um, but it really goes through on this homepage exactly how to go about training the, training the model. And then um, it's very cool that it's you know free and private. So it, it's, a, it's a desktop app, actually. So you're able to just have this thing residing on your machine. And then you use your own images and your own camera to collect any way you like. So I'll walk through a little bit the actual product. But I wanted to kind of look through it. And I think that that bears repeating, like, because you, you said it once before and you said it a second time, but I, I, I think it bears repeating like a third time is the fact that it's, it's you said it's free yeah. and that you're going to be running it locally. So you don't need um, like a cloud provider that you get to keep all of the images, like everything is just, it's it's there on your system. Exactly. So, it ha you know, the security is, is within your own computer. You don't have to share a thing. Um, it's an interesting architectural choice to create a desktop app. Um, it's, I think some folks have asked whether it can be used on a, a Chromebook. And I think this is something that, you know, they're working on because those things, those machines are kind of tricky to download um, this type of application. So it's an interesting choice to make it a desktop app as opposed to a web app. But that's the choice that they made, I think probably because of the um, architecture behind it. So, um, it's, it's just a really beautiful, I, I also find it a very beautiful user interface and very, very easy to, to, uh, to use. So they have some project templates here, and this kind of talks about their roadmap going forward. So right now we have image app classification, so you can label your image based on its content. And then the next thing indeed would be object detection. So here on my desk, I have, you know, um, some plants and I have, you know, uh, a glass and here's my microphone and it would be able to create, create these bounding boxes around it to identify what's what's available and what's what's all the different objects within one image. 
So that's really interesting, very useful. Um, and then data classification. So here's where we get into textual data analysis. And this becomes quite interesting for, you know, your business use cases. Um, if you need to um, do some financial data analysis or look at all of the um, hotel reviews that are coming through for your hotel and just, just check, you know, whether it's positive or negative. You could do some, some kind of classification around that, I'm guessing. So, but this is really cool to see that this is on the roadmap because this is a product that I think I think we'll go far once they start offering a lot of different um, opportunities and options. I dig it. And so the, the image classification versus object detection, I just want to make sure that, that I've got this right. So that, that, that image classification, it, it's, it's almost sort of like, um, like a, a, a Boolean value, although, it, you know, obviously it could go beyond that, but it's, it's going to look for something that's going to be true about the entire image. So like somebody is masked or they're not masked or this, to this this plant is a tomato plant, um, or this plant is, is is a zucchini, but it's not going to be able to go. Oh, this is where the tomato is, and this is where the zucchini is. That's where we're going to need like that object detection to be able to go with that that next step. Yeah, that's okay. right. So here I have my you know my mouse pad and my mouse, and it has to be able to to make a box around. This is the mouse pad, and there's the mouse, and okay. neither the twain shall meet. So okay. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. That makes cool. sense. Yeah. Um, I've seen uh, there's a product by Google that uses um, TensorFlow, what's it called? The Coral Board. And it has a whole camera associated to the board and it uses object detection to detect whether it sees in a video a car versus a truck coming down the highway. So it runs really, really fast and it's able to watch a video. So this is there's a lot of useful, um, useful use cases for this kind of object detection. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, so um, this is the way you go about using it. You label, train, and use, and it has this kind of um, circle that you're going to go ahead and, you know, train up on a certain group of images and then that you labeled, and then you're going to test those um, images. You're going to test some new images against what you trained on, and then you can correct the model, and it'll learn as you go. So I'll, I'll show a little bit of how that all looks in the product. And, um, very nice user interface. Um, you can automatically train. Um, just you know, set set it to go, it'll go. And then there's the opportunity to use your model, and this is what I really like. So um, I'm I'm a web developer, but I really love applied machine learning. So I love the fact that you can take a model and input it into your web or mobile app, and even use it offline. That's the beauty of this thing. You can have that model, those model files residing right within your web or mobile app, and then you can do inference against it and use it offline. And that that is fantastic. So you're not querying, you know, any kind of API externally. You can use it, you know, within your web app. The trick is, those are pretty big files, so you have to. That's the trade off. That's the trick. So. Okay. And so the 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 model that 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 um, that would be running there is that going to sit on the server or is that going to sit on on the client? It sits on the client. It's on the client. Okay. Yeah. Now um, we had um, a couple of weeks back we had Gant um, on um, whom if I remember you 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 actually know him. Yeah, he's a pal. Um, <laughs> um, but he um, he was on talking about um, TensorFlow JS and how you could actually use TensorFlow but use that in the browser. For yeah. Lobe, is there, would you be using TensorFlow there as well? Or is there a, a specific API or a, a different um, framework uh, that uh, that it uses? Yeah, it's actually using TensorFlow.js in the background, oh. actually. So, and we'll see how you can export it right from within that format. Oh my gosh, the turkeys are literally walking. It's it's a turkey trot right now. Yeah. Sorry, just looked, that was just, I just looked outside and there are giant birds. Um, raptors or something. Anyway, yeah, so it's using, um, you're able to use TensorFlow.js, um, but there are other options too. You can use uh, TensorFlow itself, which is you know not the JavaScript port of it, but the actual SDK. Um, you can use Onyx as well, which is really nice as another option. So instead of using TensorFlow, maybe you want to use Onyx, which, um, which does the same thing, but just a different way of doing it. Um, so I'll show how that all looks. And here's some examples that people have built, wildlife behavior, elephant or not. So that's the product. Very cool. 